lucky to have you because there's been a screening in Paris and you haven't been there, so we're very lucky to have you here. Now, I, I noticed that you, you were in the audience the entire movie. <laughs> you have seen uh, your movie many, many times, of course. I've seen it many times, yes. 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 How was it to, to see it again tonight? Um, I found it, I don't know, I, I, I found it very moving. <laughs> moving? <laughs> As really? though it wasn't my film. Really? Because it's been such a long time ago that you made it. I, I don't often see it on a big screen. So it's the first time in a few years, and somehow I was swept along nice. by it, as though it wasn't my film. You have been involved with the restoration of it and the digitalization of it? Yes, very much so. Did yes. you enjoy that pro uh, process of looking at it again after so many years? Of course, I'm looking to see whether um, the images are correct, whether it's... Um, uh, too bright, the colours are right, and you know, I find faults in it, uh, which I'll go back and correct. It's a never-ending process. Yeah. You're very critical for your own work. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Now, in the introduction, there was a mention about the genre. What is it? Is it a documentary? It's, uh, I can't really say. Is it a melodrama? Um, is it Because we fiction? started off, I'm basically, uh, the partnership I began was a partnership to service documentary, f documentary uh, films in television. Mm -hmm. So um, my instinct always is to go to a location, a place, and see what there is there. And if there is something I know I can exploit, faire valoir, I think the, pl the mm -hmm. word is in French, um, I'll use it immediately. For instance, the uh, sequence with Patrick Proctor. Yes. We went there, and I noticed these chandeliers. Yeah. Like water drops, they were right. Yeah, and uh, I thought, oh my God, I can make something of that. Yeah. So I featured that, and I made the sound engineer record the sound of these chandeliers making a noise. Yes. And so uh, you can see, I used it almost like a. Uh, a, 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 a policier, a, a detective novel, a detective uh, film. There's another genre in there. Yeah. Is it true that you persuaded David Hockney to uh, participate by showing him the documentary you had already made before? It didn't persuade him. <laughs> it didn't? <laughs> he came out of the... I showed him two or three uh, films I have made about artists. Mm -hmm. And when he came out of the... Uh, uh, the screening room, he said, uh, Jack, I'm not going to act. Yes. But that is precisely what he did eventually. Um, I'm surprised looking now that he seems to just follow my direction. He, he, he does what I say. Well, I wonder how scripted was it? First, there was nothing. First, I had to gain entry into his studio, uh, which was very difficult. It took six months. Uh, it, you know, it was very demoralizing. Um, and um, then one day he said, OK. I used to telephone, OK, come round. So I went round. And I, I filmed, you can see some of the stuff, I, some of the paintings and him painting, you can see. Um, but so what? There's no meaning to it. It's just a bunch of paintings with him painting, but that was not the intention to just do a documentary. We wanted to make a feature film with people paying themselves. We, we didn't have the money for actors and actresses, so we thought we'd use real people, a real painter. There's no doubt he's, he's painting. There's, it's completely... So that's documentary, if you wish. But we wanted to go further to just explore his mind, see what was, why he was doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't till we, I filmed that sequence. I think I was in there on my own. Uh, I went round there and he said to me, would you, would you like to, um, would you like to film Peter? I thought, oh my God, yes. I said, yes, I would. So he telephoned Peter who was just, had just left him and was living 
200 meters away on his own in a flat. And he came, when he came, so P Peter said, yes, he would come round. David said to him, I just want to do a little watercolor of you. Just in preparation for the oil painting I'm making. And as soon as P Peter came in and saw me, I thought he was just going to walk out. It was, uh, he, you know, it was a terrible situation. It was very, very intense and frightening. And he sat on the stool and Peter and David started painting him. And I filmed from two, two or three positions on my own, very fast. Did you do lighting as well? And oh yes, the lighting was up there, but it wasn't complex lighting, fortunately. It was just soft bounce lighting. Okay. Um, so uh, anyway, so you can see here how t it looks very tense and with the music it's even very dramatic. So I took this footage back and we, sh we screened it <coughs> and my partner, the editor David Minge, said to me, there's the story. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, David's lover has left him and he is finding it difficult to paint. Yeah? And when you started out, you didn't know about his dramatic occasion? Nothing, I knew nothing. Okay. And I resisted, I didn't want to do it. I thought it was too intrusive. I did not want to mm -hmm. go that way. It took me six weeks, eight weeks to change my mind, my opinion. And then I said, okay, I'll go with it. This will be the, the narrative, mm -hmm. le récit, yeah? And so we proceeded on that. So then all these images, that I, all these disparate single shots that I had, I could then start placing in different, juxtaposing in different positions. For instance, when uh, Peter comes down the stairs and gets on his bicycle, yes. yeah, that sequence, you then cut to David looking out of his studio. Well, that was shot two years before. So it's all montage? Montage, yeah. it's all montage. The whole film is, is sort of uh, and classic, classical montage. And the editing adds to the narrative. Yeah, yeah. So you make meaning out of shots that mean nothing really, mm -hmm. except they, pick, they, they look nice, but doesn't mean anything more than that. So in the beginning, if I get it correctly, Peter was rather reluctant to participate in the Very movie. reluctant. Oh, he was hostile. But you but could persuade him in the end. Yeah, I didn't persuade him then. He took, and then, um, that, I mean, I, I couldn't persuade him. And then one, one day, some, I said to I, he, I don't know what it was. I advised him to, do, I, I know what happened. Because Peter told me two years ago, I'd forgotten. Um, he came, he came round to the office, I took, invited him round to the office and he reluctantly came. And then he, we took him to lunch. And, um, and at the lunch, th th there was this American singer, this black singer who was in, um, uh, she's a very famous singer. And she was actually there, Pearl Bailey, that's her name. She was there having lunch. And Peter, for some reason, this meant a lot to him. <laughs> I have no idea why. He said, okay, he said, I will act for you, but this is not my life. This is what, this is your story. It's nothing to do with me. Of course, of course, it is something to do with him. <laughs> uh, but then he said, and you pay me as an actor. And so that was it. And I said, okay, Peter, should we, I'd like you to come to uh, Los Angeles with me. He said, fine, I'd love to go back to Los Angeles. For and a that's trip. where you shot the yeah. swimming pool scenes probably. Yeah. This one, that's when we pull sequence, yes. There's one sequence that struck me in particular where the, the art collector, the lady, is, is dusting off her... Uh, Betty animals, Freeman, yes. It was hard to, to um, position that dream sequence because we see David sleeping and then we see the dream sequence and then we see David waking up. Yeah. And there he is leaning against his glass window watching oh, that's, that's people... That's later on. Dinner. That's, uh, you mean, uh, uh, Kasman you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Also, Kasman is also against... Yeah, the yeah but it's surreal, surreal sequences, really. Surreal, exactly. Yeah. That's in that sense, yes. Yeah. In, in another sense, uh, the, when you're talking about the... Um, with Betty Freeman, with the feather yes. duster, that, that's a dream. But, I mean, what is surrealism but dream? 
that's what it is. So <laughs> it's stretching it a, a little bit, but... Um, Maybe before we go to uh, the audience, uh, a final question. The one thing that struck me is the, the atmosphere of the, the people there and their, the question of time. It's as if they have all the time in the world. There is no deadline. Uh, they have an ennui. They, they share conversations about nothing, really. Um, and it's just a creative process of all artists. One is a textile designer or a fashion designer or an artist, and they give each other opinions. And, but it's... a it takes the, the time is, is fluid almost in the movie. That, that's a, the sense. Of yes, art. yes, yes. I mean, um, one of my partners who um, was a very clever uh, guy who is now dead, passed away very, very young. He said to me when he saw it first, he said, "These people, they look like they've come from the moon." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I've never met people like this." But artists now love this film because it seems to reflect their life and their ennui, and their dreams, or whatever. Um, but it's doesn't, it doesn't look... They're, they're not living in a, a real life, it seems. They're totally different from uh, everybody else. <laughs> OK. I think um, there might be other questions uh, from the audience. So you, there are microphones uh, available. So if you have a question, please raise your hand, and uh, you will get uh, the microphone for you. I will ask some more questions, and if people have one, just free, free, feel free to uh, ask more. Let's talk about uh, the depiction of gay life, because there is um, male nudity, and um, we see a, a depiction of a, a, a tea party, as it's called. Um, we talked about this earlier, that on Saturday afternoons, they would organize parties, and we see um, drags, boys dressing up as girls and having contests, like being the beauty queen of, of the year. Yeah. Uh, how new was this to show this to, to the world? Oh, it's just totally uh, original. We, we'd never seen this before. It never been depicted on screen, I think. Before this, you had seen Sunday Bloody Sunday, I think, which is, doesn't really... Paris is burning, Say but anything. it's later It doesn't go into yeah. the actual, the, uh, the atmosphere, of the gay atmosphere, the gay life. It just tends to uh, show people as normal, uh, and just they happen to be gay. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite different. This is the first time. And we, Dave, when I, I was once at David's in the studio, and he received a phone call, and it was from a... The operator said, do you mind? I'm not supposed to give... This is an exclusive telephone number. I'm not supposed to give it to anybody. But there's a boy pleading to talk to you. So he said, OK, I'll speak to him. And the boy had watched a bigger splash, and he thought, oh, there's nothing wrong with my being gay. And for the first time, I've seen... I see other people who are just like me. And he said this... He said to David, this... I, I, before I wanted to kill myself, but I don't feel like that now. Is that okay? Do you think I'm okay? And David had said to him, "Yes, of course you are." So, <laughs> so um, story, it, yeah. it, it, you know, it um, it serves a purpose. The film it did at yeah. that time, mm. because everything was hidden at that point. And how was the reception in in Europe different from the States? Um, because the, it, it, oh, they, it was quite different. Uh, yeah. In the States, it was hated. Really? Yes, it was absolutely hated because it didn't, st it did not uh, stick to any genre. They couldn't understand what you know. They thought, well, "What's this? What, what is it? Is it a documentary? Is it a feature film? It's neither. We don't like it." Um, and in and Paris, it, they they received it in, in the Critics Week of Cannes, yes. the Festival of Cannes, didn't they? Yes, it was very. It was it received very well. We had no idea how it was going to. Re we didn't know. And then the ne you have to, I mean, in those days, you had to wait for the newspapers the next day. And the reception was, mar was marvellous. I was absolutely amazed that people liked it because I'd only ever shown it to my friends, you know, who are quite clever people anyway, so <laughs> they're good critics. And originally, the love scene wasn't in it. And they said, well, OK, Jack, this is very nice, but what, what, who are these people? They just seemed to say nice things to each other. They didn't realize it was a gay story? or They said to me, we do realize that it's a gay story, but I think you have to go further and tell us what's going on. 
So we went back and uh, uh, filmed that love scene. Um, let's talk about the man himself, David Hockney's reaction to the movie. Uh, he was reluctant. Uh, you've, you've told the story before. Uh, he, 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 he did know what was going on. David is completely narrow, focused on painting. So whenever I went in there with very few people, maybe th me, an assistant and a sound man maybe, or sometimes just me, in the shower there was just me, me and him. And he said to me, Jack, you're crazy. But um, oh, I've forgotten the thread, what am I talking about? No, about the reception oh, yeah. by David Hockney oh, after God. it was released. So he, 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 he just paints, all he wants to do is paint. So I'd set up my lights, you know, and then I'd say, oh David, could you just walk? past me, could you just go to the shower, but usually one take, because any more than, if you, if you tell them to do it again, oh sorry, I, I must do it again, and he wouldn't do it, one take, bang, plus I didn't have any money for lots of films, so it had to be one take, yeah, so, uh, and then there were all these shots out of order, yeah, there's no, he, he couldn't see a sequence, only we could in the cutting room. I'd go back and we'd start juggling, you know, we'll put this here, we'll put that there, we'll join this with this, oh, we'll put that up there, yeah, so he didn't know what was going on. So when he went to see it, he had no idea. He said he thought it was just some, uh, uh, you know, shots of paintings to Mozart, but of course it wasn't like that at all. And so when he came out of the, uh, the theatre... <laughs> wasn't a good day for no, you. No, no, no. But what he did was, he didn't just leave it there, uh, you know. He went to his friends and he went to... And he sent Ozzy Clark to the theatre. And Ozzy came out of the theatre. He said to me... And Ozzy had been very cynical and sarcastic about it. He wasn't, was not a very easy person to deal with. And he turned to me and said, Jack, this film is truer than the truth. Yeah? So then, okay, he so then he, he went to, uh, uh, he was living in Paris. He got Shirley Goldfarb, this, uh, this lady who used to dress in the same clothing every day with a, with a turtleneck sweater like this and, and dark, blue jeans and funny shoes, very high heels, uh, clog type shoes. And um, she came to, he paid for her to come to uh, London to have a look. She came out and she says, Jack, this is the greatest film on art I've ever seen. Okay, fine. So this Not goes back to David, you see. Yeah. So then he bent, uh, he brought uh, Henry Geltzahler to watch it. I think he came to, to, to Cannes to watch the it. The third one to see yeah. it. And he said, well, <laughs> so there we are. So uh, I, I knew I was okay. And David slowly accepted it. So we went to, um, we went to, after Cannes, there was a showing in um, that place where the, um, where they had this, t in, in Paris, that uh, special theater, where they had mu that music concert where the, the terrorists uh, killed them all, you know. Bataclan. Yeah. Um, so they, after Cannes, they show it there. So David sat in the back row with the audience, and the audience were cheering. <laughs> so he felt very good after that. So he changed his mind. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. But he still asked me, he asked me, what, 20, 30 years ago, what do you think of the film? I didn't know what to say. <laughs>